Welcome to Option Chain Analysis video which is the part 10 of Option Trading Strategies video series. So today's video is about Option Chain Analysis which includes Put Call Ratio and Implied Volatility as the subtopic. In this video we will be learning how to analyze Put Call Ratio and Implied Volatility in Option Trading through Option Chain. In case you've landed directly on this particular video, I would strongly recommend for you to start with part one of Option Trading Strategy series. Link to all these videos is in the description box below. So by the time you end today's video, you will know how to use put call ratio and implied volatility as a data point in your option trading. Once we are finished with the basics of implied volatility and put call ratio, I will then explain how to read open interest data, put call ratio and implied volatility from option chain to formulate rules with respect to option trading. What I'll be doing is I'll be covering up put call ratio and implied volatility in separate section and will tell you how to relate these individually to open interest. I will then take up put call ratio and implied volatility case study where I will show you how these can be useful in trading and in the end I will give you some practical insights and eight specific rules that you have to follow with respect to put call ratio, implied volatility and option open interest. So this particular video will bring together open interest, put call ratio, price analysis and implied volatility analysis and you can be sure of one thing that at first this video will confuse you a little bit but do watch this video multiple times to get these concepts right. It will start getting easy as you keep watching this again and again and as you practice these concepts more often you will start getting hang of this. So the open interest analysis video was already released a couple of weeks back the link to that particular video will show up here. So let's get started with this particular video. So let me first begin with the concept of put call ratio and implied volatility. So beforehand, let me tell you one thing that put call ratio, implied volatility, open interest and price analysis, when they come together, they kind of confuse someone who's not that familiar with these terms and these concepts. So what I've done is I have taken up the easiest approach in explaining this and in case you have the time, do watch this video multiple times. And I can assure you one thing that once you finish this video and watch it multiple times, you will know how to put these concepts to test in real time market. So let's begin with put call ratio first. So put call ratio is a derivative indicator to understand the underlying sentiment in the market. This can be used as a contrarian indicator as well as trend following indicator. This depends on traders preference. So put call ratio is basically the number of put options traded divided by number of call options traded. It can be calculated using open interest or volume. Again, it depends on your own preference. As such, there is no advantage or disadvantage of using the either. However, open interest based put call ratio should be used if you want to combine put call ratio and open interest analysis together. I would actually recommend using both and then seeing which one appeals the most to you. Difference is not much but you need to stick with one way of calculating it and unless you try both you wouldn't know which one you would prefer. So open interest based put call ratio is actually calculated by dividing total open interest across all put strike prices across all the series by total open interest across all call strike prices again across all the series. You can also calculate put call ratio by taking only the current data series again that totally depends on your own preference. So put call ratio based on open interest would be put option open interest divided by call option open interest. So in case current month is February 2019, then put call ratio based on open interest would be calculated as Nifty February put open interest plus Nifty March put open interest plus Nifty April put open interest divided by the open interest across call for February, March and April series. So I hope this particular point is clear how to calculate put call ratio based on open interest. So volume based put call ratio on the other hand is calculated by dividing the total volume across all put strike prices again across all series 
by total volume across all call strike prices across all the series. So you can also calculate put call ratio by taking only current data series. As we saw in open interest, it totally depends upon what you prefer. So therefore, put call ratio based on volume would be put option volume across all strike prices and all series divided by call option volume across all the series and across all strike prices. So if the current month is February 2019, put call ratio volume would be very similar to what we saw for open interest. The only difference is that instead of open interest, we are considering volume here. So one common question that comes to mind is how do you access put call ratio data and implied volatility data. So I'll just uh, show you a couple of resources that are completely free for all of you to use. Put call ratio data is actually fairly easy to procure. It is implied volatility data that you would need to take from NSE website and you'll have to track it manually for both calls and puts. Some softwares are available which give you this information but those softwares are not free and there's usually a monthly subscription fee associated with those softwares. For getting the put call ratio value on NSE website, just follow this link mentioned here. Every day at end of the day after 6.30, 7pm, put call ratio is updated for index options, stock options and for to FNO total. This put call ratio data can be accessed through Bloomberg Quint website. Both volume and open interest based put call ratio is given. The link for Bloomberg Quint website is mentioned here. On Motilal Oswal website, you get put call ratio data based on volume and open interest across the series. Again, this information is very helpful. I'll be showing you how towards the end of the video. All of this data that is given on NSE website, Bloomberg Quint and Motilal Oswal, this is absolutely free. For implied volatility data, you will have to visit the NSE website and go on option chain link. Once you're on the options chain link, this is for nifty, you will find implied volatility data across call and put strike prices. Again, this data is little bit tedious to procure because you will have to manually track data for both calls and puts. Let us now move towards the concept of implied volatility. Now there are two kinds of volatility in market. One is the historical volatility and second is the implied volatility. This applies to all stocks and indices. Now historical volatility is calculated from previous price movement in stock or index, whereas implied volatility is actually calculated through option pricing model. Again, you don't need to go into the detail of calculation, etc. But in case you want to, then information for same is available on Google. Now historical volatility is calculated for any stock traded across exchange whereas implied volatility is only calculated for entities that are actively traded in the options segment. Historical volatility actually indicates the past volatility in that particular asset and it is not ideal for estimating any sort of future volatility that may arise. Whereas if you look at implied volatility that actually takes into account current market conditions thereby it's a better estimate of any kind of future volatility that may creep in into that particular asset. In the later slides, I will be showing you why it is important to know the direction of volatility in general. So there are two key things associated with implied volatility that is IV. One is spike and mean reversion. So we all know that IV is actually more cyclical than price. However, there are times when we see that IV deviates from mean and it rises rapidly. By IV, I mean implied volatility. I hope this is clear. So why uh, volatility in market spikes? It's basically due to unexpected events in market. There are times when market participants actually get exposed to events which are totally unexpected and that actually causes huge spike in IV. And this actually results in surge of premiums of calls or puts depending on the nature of the event. Generally, it is option buyers who would prefer IVs to rise as they stand to benefit from the same. I'll be covering more on this later when we discuss put call ratio and how put call ratio, IV and open interest come together. Now, just like there is a spike in IV, there is also mean reversion 
of IV where it cools off after a spike or surge has happened. So typically IV is high due to anticipation around an event and if event is really important and widely covered you will see volatility pricing in that particular hype. Now once uncertainty of outcome is over it is then that we see cool off happening in IVs. Once this cool off happens implied volatility then reverts back to mean. This phenomena is actually called IV mean reversion. Generally it is option sellers who would prefer IVs to cool off after a spike since they stand to benefit from this. Now once you see IVs spiking you will see that premiums usually go high and when volatility begins to cool off premiums begin to move lower which actually give opportunity to option seller to sell those premiums when they are high. So just remember two key things here when IVs rise and premiums rise it is option buyers who benefit and when the cool off begins of volatility it is option sellers who will benefit because they will tend to short sell options when the premiums are high and IV begins to cool off. I hope this particular concept is clear. In the next slide we will be looking at eight specific rules with respect to implied volatility and open interest. So in this section I will cover open interest and IV related eight rules. Now first four rules are really important whereas remaining four are supplementary. First you should start by understanding the four important rules and then try to learn the supplementary rules which are equally important. So the first rule is when you see open interest build up in put options is increasing along with rise in implied volatility then that indicates long formation in puts. Rule number two is when you see open interest build up in put options increasing along with fall in implied volatility this actually indicates short formation inputs or rather writing inputs. Third rule is if you see open interest build up in call options increasing along with rise in implied volatility then this indicates long formation in calls. And on the flip side rule 4 is if you see open interest build up increasing in calls along with fall in implied volatility this actually indicates short selling or writing in calls. Now these are four key rules that you have to keep in mind and now I'll show you four supplementary rules. Again this will seem a little confusing at first but all you have to do is take a screenshot of all these rules and then keep, uh, keep them in front of you and then start studying. Don't take screenshot of this particular screen that you'll have to do it towards the end when we have rule related to open interest, implied volatility and put call ratio. So let us now move to the four supplementary rules which relate open interest and implied volatility together. So these four that you see are the four supplementary rules for open interest and IV. So rule number five is if you see open interest build up in put options decreasing along with rise in implied volatility then that indicates short covering inputs. Rule number six is if you see open interest build up in put options decreasing along with fall in implied volatility then that indicates long unwinding inputs that is those who are holding long positions they are exiting those positions. So if you see this is rule number seven if you see open interest build up in call options decreasing along with rise in implied volatility then that indicates short covering in calls. Now rule number eight is if you see open interest build up happening in calls that is decreasing along with fall in implied volatility then that indicates long unwinding in calls. So these are the four supplementary rules with respect to open interest and implied volatility and what we saw in the previous slide that is this slide these are the first four important rules that you have to keep in mind. So these four rules are the most important ones and these four rules are supplementary rules. Now what I've done is I've covered eight specific rules with respect to open interest and implied volatility 
you just have to keep these rules in mind and when we finish up with put call ratio then we will study eight specific rules which bring these three concepts together and which would actually complete option chain analysis that you require to trade successfully so let us now move to the section of put call ratio where we will see these similar rules and then take up a case study so put call ratio can be used as a confirmation or contrarian indicator that is something we discussed in the first slide it depends on how a trader wants to use it now if pcr that is put call ratio is above 1 this actually indicates more open interest build up at puts if pcr is below 1 this actually indicates more open interest build up in calls now keep a tab on how put call ratio shapes up as this actually gives vital clues in trend developing in market you have to combine put call ratio open interest analysis and implied volatility together to draw concrete conclusions i'll be showing you how to do this towards the end of this particular video so when put call ratio reaches a zone of 0.5 to 0.7 think in terms of bullish option strategies pending confirmation from what open interest and implied volatility suggests and when put call ratio reaches a zone of 1.5 to 1.7 start thinking defensively now this will depend on other factors like open interest and iv but for now just remember this broad guideline that i've told you about put call ratio and the range of it if put call ratio increases from 0.5 to 0.7 and you see price consistently forming a structure of higher high and higher low this actually has bullish implications this means that put writers are more aggressively writing puts and they are expecting trend to move higher now if put call ratio decreases from a region of 1.5 to 1.7 and you see price forming a range this actually means consolidation this means call writers are beginning to get active and expect limited upside in the market on the other hand if put call ratio decreases from 1.5 and 1.7 region and you see a clear trending structure of lower high and lower low emerge this actually has bearish implications this suggests aggressive call writing at higher levels again these are very broad guidelines to follow when combining just put call ratio and price you will see in the next few slides how this will change when we include implied volatility and open interest analysis in detail but for now just keep these three relations in mind with respect to put call ratio and price action so up till now you've seen general range for put call ratio and how to think in terms of resistance or support and bullish or bearish option strategies preference you have also seen how to link price action with where put call ratio is in order to determine potential uptrending or downtrending phase in market now remember one thing that open interest only indicates the net open position in market and how do we determine whether build up in puts when put call ratio is greater than 1.5 is that of long position in puts or writing in puts similarly how do we know when put call ratio is less than 0.8 to 0.9 whether build up in calls that has happened is due to long positions in calls or simply writing in calls now this is where implied volatility comes into play those eight specific rules that we studied few slides back now remember that whenever build up in option happens along with increase in implied volatility that actually suggests long formation in that particular option and whenever build up in option happens along with fall in implied volatility that actually suggests short formation in that option or rather writing in that option that is what we studied when we saw open interest and implied volatility in the previous slides now we need to see how put call ratio open interest price and iv come together this will actually help you analyze entire option chain with ease now individually we have seen how to analyze open interest and price that is in the open interest video we have also seen how to analyze put call ratio and price that we saw in the last slide and we have seen how to analyze implied volatility and open interest but now with the basic understanding of all the, the combination that we have seen we will now see how to analyze 
an option chain with eight specific rules. Now these are the rules that you have to take screenshot of and take a printout and always keep these rules in front of you when you are analyzing option chain. Now four out of these eight rules that are the first four rules are the most important rules whereas the remaining four will be the supplementary rules. So let us uh, get started with the framework of eight rules that we will be using to analyze option chain from now on. So these are the four most important rule when it comes to option chain analysis. Rule number one, if you see put call ratio rising and open interest build up in put options increasing along with rise in IV, then that indicates long formation in puts. Rule number two, if you see put call ratio rising, open interest build up in put also rising along with fall in IV, then that indicates short formation in puts. Rule number three, if you see put call ratio falling and open interest build up in call options increasing along with rise in implied volatility, then that indicates long formation in calls. Now rule number four is if you see put call ratio falling along with open interest build up in call increasing and fall in implied volatility, then that indicates short formation in calls. Now these four rules are the most important rules that you have to keep in mind while analyzing option chain. So these four rules actually complete the most important rules section. Now we'll move to the four supplementary rules that relates put call ratio, open interest and implied volatility together. So rule number five is if you see put call ratio falling and open interest build up in puts is decreasing along with fall in IV, then that indicates put unwinding. Rule number six is if you see put call ratio falling, open interest build up in put options is decreasing along with rise in IVs, then that indicates short covering in puts. Rule number seven is if you see put call ratio increases and open interest build up in call is decreasing along with fall in IV, then that indicates call unwinding. Rule number eight is if you see put call ratio rising and open interest build up in call is decreasing along with spike in implied volatility, then that indicates short covering in calls. Now what you've seen here uh, in the open interest analysis video was the relationship between price and open interest in this particular video with put call ratio and implied volatility. Now you can analyze open interest and option chain to precisely know when to prefer buying or selling related option strategies. What I will suggest you to do is to begin with these four most important rules and then graduate to these supplementary rules. You can do all of this together also, that is completely up to you, but draw, don't try to master all these eight rules at once. Start slowly and identify scenarios that you can relate to and then you should sort of move to another rule and see in which scenarios that particular rule fits in. See what happens is as a beginner or even if you have not known about these rules and this is the first time you're seeing it this information becomes a little bit overwhelming at first, which is why I told that you need to take a screenshot of this particular rule and this particular rules and then keep it in front of you. And as market develops each day, try and relate to what is happening based on these specific rules. This is the only way you will know how to apply these rules in option trading. So now what I'll do is that I'll see I'll show you how put call ratio, IV price and open interest fits together. So let us now revisit the first 15 days of October 2018 to see what happened. Now these are the first 15 days that I actually analyzed in the open interest video. So in the open interest video, I had actually shown you how price and open interest behaved for the first 15 days. Now taking the same example, I'll be showing you what happens when you include implied volatility, open interest, put call ratio and price analysis on the same data that is the first 15 days of October 2018.
So this chart in front of you is the put call ratio chart for options for October 2018. During the first 15 days of October and for the month in general, you've seen put call ratio steadily moving lower. Remember in the open interest video, we had only considered price and open interest build up. This chart that you see in front of you is the IV chart for add the money options for October 2018. During the first 15 days of October, IV actually moved lower and during the remaining 12 days of the October series, IV started moving up again. This is the open interest change for the first 15 days of October. Clearly significant amount of open interest buildup has happened in calls. Now 10,500 call has added close to 2.8 million in open interest, 10,600 call added close to 2.5 million, followed by 10,700 and 10,800 call option, which added close to 3.2 and 3.5 million in open interest. Now, how do we know whether this is call writing or call buying? The first clue that comes up with price and open interest analysis is that as price moved lower, open interest has increased significantly at calls as seen in the chart in front of you. So the first hint that we always get is with the relationship of price and open interest. Now, furthermore, if you see with the charts that I just showed you, implied volatility moved lower and put call ratio also moved lower. So when implied volatility and put call ratio moves lower along with open interest buildup increasing in calls, then that signifies short selling or writing in calls. This was the fourth most important rule that we discussed earlier. Make sure that rules are also confirmed by what price suggests. So again, I'll repeat when implied volatility and put call ratio moves lower along with open interest buildup increasing, then that actually signifies short selling or writing in calls. If you recollect, it was this particular rule. So now we know that in October, when price was actually falling lower from October 1st to October 15th, this was on back of writing happening in calls that is aggressive writing. So I hope this particular point is clear. In the previous slide, we saw that in the first 15 days of October, it is short selling in calls that led the market lower. In the remaining 15 days, if you see price has again moved lower with momentum, now the natural question here is, was this move based on long put positions or was it something else? Well, let me explain this for you. Let us recollect that implied volatility and put call ratio data for these remaining 15 days were as follows. Put call ratio actually continued to move lower, whereas implied volatility saw a spike happening in the last 12 days of October. I hope this point is clear. So while put call ratio moved lower, implied volatility moved higher with price being at 10,700 substantial open interest reduction was actually seen at 10,500, 600, 700 and 800 PE. So what happened in these put strike prices is as follows. So put call ratio moved lower, implied volatility moved higher and open interest reduction was seen. So this actually signifies short covering inputs and this is what happened. This was the second supplementary rule that we discussed. That was rule number six. So therefore the move from 10,700 to 10,100 in the last two weeks of October did not see any fresh long position build up. It was actually due to simple short covering inputs. So I hope now you can see how uh, the move in October, the first part was due to writing in calls and the second part was due to short covering inputs. For the remaining part of October and the month in general, call writing was clearly visible at all strike prices. Similarly, we have seen put open interest reduction happening in strike prices of 10,500, 600, 700 and 800. So I hope now you can see how to use these rules to relate to what is happening in the market. Again, this won't be easy at first and you will have to keep close watch on how data and rules link together. 
Now do not intend making money right away with this be patient and first put in the efforts to learn this fully I would recommend that start by mastering one or two main rules that we have seen and then move to the remaining rules along with the supplementary rules Now what I'll do is a more open interest and option chain analysis videos will be put up in the following weeks to make you uh, you know help you understand this concept better I'll also try and put up specific examples related to this topic of bringing open interest implied volatility put call ratio and price analysis together so my one recommendation to you would be to watch this video multiple times to understand this concept of options thoroughly i will also recommend for you to watch the open interest analysis video again and to watch this particular video as many as time as possible the key here is to practice and to take notes and there will be times when data is not clear during those times do not lose your patience and just wait for the clarity to emerge so if you find this video worth it kindly consider it sharing and kindly consider hitting the like button as well so thanks a lot for watching this video guys in case you have any doubt about what i've shown you just leave a comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible see you next time take care and have a great weekend ahead click on the subscribe button and bell icon to get instantly notified when a new video is uploaded Thank you for subscribing.